Okay, class. So today we'll show how to use MATLAB to implement transfer function and use a transfer function method to solve a mechanical system problem. Well, transfer function is based on the Laplace transformation. So Laplace transformation can transform a function as a function of t after Laplace transformation can transform it into uh, a function y as a function of s. So basically we uh, try to solve a problem in time, in in time domain, and convert to, to a complex s domain, complex number s. Okay, so if you can do a Laplace transformation of y into uppercase y, and then for its uh, derivatives, for example, the first derivative, we use dot to represent the first derivative, we do Laplace transformation, it will become s times y. The second derivative will become s squared uppercase y. So, and you notice that a differential a uh, differential term after Laplace transformation become a uh, algebra term. So that means for differential equation after La Laplace transformation, we can convert a differential equation into a algebra equation, and then it's much easier to solve it. That's the spirit of transfer function. Okay, so when to get transfer function and the differential equation must be a linear time invariant differential equation, because if it's linear, that means it's a combination of either y or its derivative terms. Okay, and time invariant means there's no time coefficient for all the coefficients are constant values. Okay, so if it's a linear transfer, of, uh, tra linear in time invariant differential equation, and then we can write in a general form. So on one side, on one side, there's, there's output y terms. And this is a linear comb combination of so y says n is uh, higher order derivative terms. And then we have input x here. The same thing, input is also x, and it's a linear combination of uh, higher order derivative terms. So notice that uh, all of these terms can, we can do a Laplace transformation. If we do Laplace transformation for each term here, shows here is if you do Laplace transformation, for example, for this term, Laplace transformation is a zero and the s to the power of n and uppercase y. And then we can do the same thing on other terms. The other side for the input side, we can do the same thing for the first term after Laplace transformation is s b zero s to the power of m and uppercase x. Here x is a lowercase x is a function of t uppercase is a function of a complex number s. Okay, so once after after the Laplace transformation, and then we can get the ratio of y over x, the output over input, and will equals. So by manipulating the differential equation, we can get y over x after Laplace transformation is a function of a polynomial s over another polynomial s. Okay, so, and we call this gs is a transfer function. So, transfer function, there's some interesting fact about transfer function. Okay, the transfer function is an intrinsic, intrinsic uh, property of a system. So, it's unrelated to the magnitude and nature of the input, although we obtain that through the ratio of output and input of after Laplace transformation, but it's an intrinsic value. Okay, so for the transfer function of many physical systems, for example, electric system and mechanical system, they might have the same transfer function. Uh, third is if the transfer function system is known, and then the output can be obtained. So if we know the transfer function means giving any input, we can get the output. The last one is if the system is unknown, if the system is unknown, transfer function of the system is unknown, we can establish the transfer fun function by introducing a known input and look at the output. And that transfer function will be the Laplace transformation of output over the Laplace transformation of input. Okay, with this in mind, we'll see that how to apply transfer function to solve a mechanical system and then we'll implement in MATLAB. Okay, here is an example. So the example 
will work on is we have simplified automobile suspension system where M, the mass, is a car which connects to the road through K and B. K is a spring, B is a damper. Uh, well, the surface, the surface road is not even, so we have U to represent the surface of the road. So you can imagine that the with with car moving forward, with car moving forward, the U will change. And uh, well, now we assume that the mass is 100 km B, 400 K is 800, and the displacement of the surface or the, the surface or displacement input U takes sine waveform. So means the road is uneven, it takes a sine wave format. And the problem is to, based on the input, to get the output of the displacement of the car uh, in vertical direction. So the input, what we have is the surface change of the road, the output, the output will be the displacement of the car in vert vertical direction. So to solve this problem, well, the first step is we want to set up the mathematical equation and then by Laplace transformation we'll get is a transfer function. Okay, so set up the math model for mechanical system, dynamical mechanical system, there's nothing new. Okay, so dynamics is always F equals MA. And we can draw a free diagram on the car. And this is our free diagram. And we'll look at the force acting on it. For the force, well, there's a spring force, there's damping force. Well, so for spring force, uh, we have minus k. So it's always resistive. So we always put minus there and the k times, well, and the spring force depends on the stretching or compression of the spring. And the spring is connected to two points, y on y, the other on u. So, and the compression or stretch of the spring depends on the difference between y and u. So that will lead to y will go first because it's a resistance and minus u. And the spring force, and similarly, we can get the damping force is minus b, but this time it will be velocity. Velocity is the first derivative of the displacement, u dot. And that's two forces acting on the car. And, and you might ask why, where is the gravity? Well, so we're assuming that it's, uh, the spring, the spring is, it was initially compressed as a balance point that the compression will counteract with gravity. So we can neglect gravity in this case. So if we set the original, original uh, position y at a compressed state. And then we have two force terms in that way. So on the other side, we have acceleration. Acceleration is simple m times a. a is the second degree of displacement. That will be y dot dot. All right, so now we get a mathematical model. And then what we'll do is we'll move all the output term in one side and input term on the other side. So I, what I will do is I will move all the output output terms on the side. Y is the output, which plus b y dot and plus k y, and the input term will be k u plus b u dot the first derivative. And then we'll do a Laplace transformation on the differential equation. So after La Laplace transformation, what we have is m s square y and b s, because the first derivative is the one, one s, so s to the power of one, uppercase y and plus k y. And then we the other side we have a k u, which is Laplace transformation and then plus b s u. Well, 
and you can further move all S term one side and the input output on the other side. So we have Y over U. Notice that Y is a function of S, U is a function of S2 equals K plus, or I will put the, the high order at the beginning. So BS plus K over MS squared plus BS plus k so and this will be our tra transfer function this will be our transfer function okay so based on the mathematical model after Laplace transformation transfer function will equals the output over input and then equals bs plus k and then over another polynomial equation so with this transfer function, and then we can solve the problem. So given any input, we should be able to get the output. Okay, so we'll use a control system toolbox to get the output if the input is a sine wave, sine t. Okay, so let's go back to MATLAB. So here, uh, first I will define all the variables. I know that the mass is 100. Um, B e is 400, K is 800, it's an SI unit, standard unit. So now we have all of them. Well, you know what? I will create a new script and make sure that you can see it. Do the input again. So after that, we can we need to define uh, numerical part for the new numerical part of the transfer function is uh, the coefficient of b and the k. So we'll put b and the k for the numerical part. But denominator we're writing a way that also put the coefficient of the polynomial there is m b e, k. So with that, we can design, define our transfer function. We can define our transfer function. I will name the transfer function as G. And the use building function is called TF, short for transfer function. And then input is a numerator and then denominator. So once we have that, and we have the transfer function, we need to define input. The input is sine wave. So I will define, here I will define uh, input U. So to define U, I first define T, the time, Time will start from zero with the interval point one, and let's say that I want to go up to 60 second, and then u equals sine t. So, well, this in this case is x, so uh, is y. The output is y. Y will equals uh, the building function is called l s i m, and then input uh, transfer function, and then input, and then time and then I got a y. So once I get a y, so in order to I want not I don't want to show them so I will put a selling seven column to silence all of them. I still want to look at the transfer function format. And then after solution I want to plot it. I will plot as a function of u. Okay so I also want to look at the output, uh, the, the input. So I put hold on here and then plot T, U, and then hold off. All right, and then I can write the simulation. Okay, so you can, you can see that there are two outputs. Uh, one is uh, u as a function of t, which is a uh, red line, and then y is a function of t also, which is a uh, blue line. So we can imagine that if it's a sine wave surface and the car will also go with a sine wave format. Okay, that's pretty much what we have for today.